Welcome to my channel, Rainier Books, and have a happy new year. Have a peaceful new year. Have a healthy new year, first of all, for you and all of your loved ones. My name is Rainer, and this is Rainier Books. Today, the time has come to reveal to you the 10 best works of fiction that I read in 2023. As always, I have to say, I have to admit, it's not been, it has not been easy. There were some disappointments, some books that I DNF, but mostly, again, I was very satisfied with what I read in the last year. And as always, this list is changeable. That means if I would do it next week, maybe some of the positions would change on a singular day in January as they were when I made this list in December. One of my goals is to keep the videos shorter than this year because most of the people watching videos on YouTube, they watch three, four or five minutes and then they click on to the next video. So let's do this now. Coming in at number 10 in my list is Small Worlds by Caleb Azuma Nelson. 240 pages published by Viking on May 1st, 2023. And here we have three summers in the life of a young Londoner named Stephen. Stephen, who is a dancer. He is of Ghanaian descent, his parents come from there, the relationship to his father is complicated and he is looking for his path in life, for his way in life and he falls in love and I know no other British young author who is able to write that beautiful and not romantical about young love but also about masculinity. I already loved his debut Open Water and I'm really really curious about what he will do next. Small Worlds was shortlisted for the Orwell Prize for Political Fiction in 2023. Next book on number nine is Fire Rush by Jacqueline Crooks. That was shortlisted for the Women's Prize. We stay in London for a little while longer because now comes Fire Rush about a woman, about a young woman named Jemay. And this novel actually dominated my Spotify usage, my Spotify consumption in terms of music in 2023. I know Bob Marley is not dub. And a lot of the music in the book is dub music. The end of the 1970s, Yamei falls in love with Moose, and Crooks describes this first great love and also the friendship to other young women in that time, so poetic and beautiful and awesome. But then a violent act of police brutality takes Moose away from her, and she continues, well, she continues outside London to Bristol in a abusive relationship with another black man. A novel about growing up as a Caribbean English woman, about liberation and about a grand finale in cockpit country in the heart of Jamaica. Prize number eight, Behold the Dreamers by Mbolo Mbwe from 2016, this book actually, and the debut novel by Mbolo Mbwe. Two families in New York who could not be further apart. Jende Jonga and his wife are illegally in the United States and they dream the American dream and still believe it is there for everybody, regardless of where you come from, regardless of your race and the color of your skin. Clark Edwards is a manager on Wall Street and he hires Jenda as a car driver, as his driver. In the course of the novel, we're going to meet both families and they will also get closer to each other. But Jen Day gets caught and deportation awaits him. Both couples have maternal problems and Imbolo Mbwe's achievement in this narrative in this narrative is that she portrays both families with white and black, rich and poor, with as much affection and as much empathy and sympathy for both of them. I also loved Mbolo Mbwe's second novel, which is called, or which was called, How Beautiful We Were, and I can't wait for her next one, for her third book. Behold the Dreamers was the winner of the Penn Faulkner Award in the United States in 2017. Number seven comes in Time Shelter by Georgi Gospodinov, translated from the Bulgarian by Angela Rodel or Angela Rodel. Originally published was this book in Bulgarian in 2020. The translation came out last year in 2023. My first ever Bulgarian book brought me to one of Europe's greatest living authors who actually has been nominated for several times already for the Nobel Prize of Literature or for Literature. We all could use a time shelter in our times, it seems. German President Frank-Walter Steinmeier said in his traditionally 
Christmas speech to the German people, that the sentence that he had heard most often in the last year from people he met everywhere was, I do not watch TV news anymore because everything is just so dark. Gospodinov's novel actually starts with a Bulgarian man named Gostin, who builds an asylum, he builds a sanatorium for Alzheimer patients in Switzerland. Thomas Mann vibes come here, where they can revisit forlorn memories of the 1950s and 1960s, and then slowly for other decades, for later decades. There is a fast buildup of this great success that Gostin achieves, and we end up in a situation in the novel where whole countries have to make or want to make referendums about to which glorious year of their past they want to go back to when their country was great in order to make life great again, make them rich again. You know the story. In this philosophical and political novel, Gospodinov shows how dangerous the collective longing for the past, the collective orientation towards the past can be and can become. The winner of the International Booker in Translation Prize for 2023, Georgi Gospodinov. My number six is Demon Copperhead by Barbara King Solver, another highly awarded book. Charles Dickens's David Copperfield is a milestone in world literature. It's about poverty in 19th century United Kingdom. Renowned best-selling American author Barbara Kingsolver, she lives in Appalachia, which has become a synonym uh, for the American opioid crisis, but also for American poverty in the 21st century. And Kingsolver has transferred Dickens's David Copperfield from the 19th century Victorian England to the 21st century Appalachian United States. And her David is called Demon in the book, Copperhead because of his red hair. And in King Salva's narrative, in her brilliantly narrated book, which is captivating, it's a Bildungsroman, which leaves you breathless and tear-eyed, I promise you, but it will leave you happy as well. Demon has to go through all through hell many times over in order to survive. King Solver has not only created a new Copperfield in Copperhead, but also she has transferred a lot of the characters that Dickens has used in David Copperfield into the 21st century and with other figures. She also told the story in the same amount of chapters as Dickens did, 64, a masterclass in storytelling and the winner of the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction and also the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2023. And my number five is already there. It is Foster by Claire Keegan, actually a 14-year-old book, 2009, published in Ireland, where King King Solver brought us an amazing novel and captivating book on 548 pages. The Irish author Claire Keegan delivers another amazing book on just 89 pages. During a hot Irish summer, a young child is taken away from her impoverished and unloving parents to the Kinsella house, where she, for the first time in her short life, meets Oh, she meets older foster parents and she also discovers for the first time what affection, what love can mean to a human being, and how good it feels for your soul and your heart to feel loved and welcome. But the Kinsellas, they also have a dark secret. Like in her amazing book and her beautiful book, Small Things Like These, Keegan is a genius in delivering short prose, but at the same time also revealing so much atmosphere and tension. She gives a voice to the simple everyday life people and how much it impacts our present and our future. Foster won the Davy Burns Award in 2009 in her native Ireland and also gained international first acclaim, international acclaim first now for this. In 2022, the novella became a movie in Ireland, a feature film shot in the Irish language. The English title was The Quiet Girl, which became the first ever Irish language movie to be nominated for an Academy Award for Best Foreign Picture in 2023. My number four is Bourneville by Jonathan Coe, published in 22. Jonathan Coe is an author who has several times already succeeded in writing about the history, the history of his own country, of the United Kingdom, especially England, um, the country after the Brexit, by using fictitious characters, illustrating the changes and difficulties and how they influence people. But when, when new times come. In recent years, Co has tried to analyze Brexit, the longing for the good old times, hello Gospodinov, by many in his writing. 
Bourneville, outside Birmingham, is the home of the very famous, in Britain, very famous Chadbury Chocolate Factory. It is an empire, a chocolate empire that generations of Britons grew up with and that was labeled not chocolate by the European Union, which hurt so many British people, of course, because the EU analyzed Chadbury and they said too much fat and not enough cocoa. So this is not chocolate, folks. By narrating an intergenerational family story spanning over four generations from World War II to our time with a beautiful female character at center and using milestones of English history such as the coronation of Queen Elizabeth, the World Cup final in 1966 between England and Germany and Brexit and some others, Cole manages to interweave history that we all experience with the lives of ordinary people. A pure pleasure to read this book. And my number three, the bronze medal she goes to, they goes, it goes to, the guest by Emma Klein. Alex is young and beautiful, and she lives with her rich sugar daddy in a beautiful house on Long Island outside New York until she makes a very stupid mistake. And she embarrasses her lover and she throws her out, or should I say her longtime John, throws her out of the house and she becomes basically homeless. She is just a guest on that island, on that rich island, Long Island, in a world she doesn't belong to and where only status and money give you a safe and healthy and secure life. But Alex is convinced that she just has to get through a couple of more days and nights until that big party that her sugar daddy has planned. Then he will take her back. So Alex stays on Long Island. She doesn't give up. And she tries to survive and find a place to stay. And she counts on her looks and her instinct to find people who can take her through the days and through the night and give her a place to sleep. I was fascinated by this coldness, this strange atmosphere of this novel. The book has very much average ratings on both Goodreads and on Storygraph, but not always a book that has average ratings has to be bad for you if you read it. I loved it. Some people criticized the incomplete ending. I loved how Emma Klein took me into that weird feverish dream of a woman that wants to belong so much to this cold material world and how everything goes wrong for her. Silver medal goes to the number two novel for me is Wandering Souls by Cécile Pain. This is the heartbreaking and heartwarming debut novel about three Vietnamese refugees who left Vietnam, who flee from Vietnam shortly after the Americans also left the country in 1975. The children, An, Tan, and Min, they reached the shore in Hong Kong just to realize that they lost both their parents and their four other siblings to the sea. A horrible tragedy has happened. South China Chi has swallowed them. Pin describes the lives of these three children in the refugee camp in Hong Kong. And then the dream of going to the United States and further. But they end up in Great Britain, in Margaret Thatcher's Great Britain, actually, in 1979. A country that was taken very much far to the right and where the newcomers were everything else but welcome. Because they looked different from the British people. The novel is told out of several perspectives and we have some documents in the novel and one of the voices belongs to a brother who drowned at sea. It's a captivating book, a small book, but a beautiful book. Poetically rich in sparse language, Cecile Pound tells the story, the ever actual story of immigration and trauma, of grief and xenophobia, but also of resilience and surviving and delivered a book that still resonates strongly with me. And now my number one comes. The gold medal, well, it goes to The Shards by Brett Easton Ellis. I am surprised that this 608-page novel does not show much on lists with the 10 best books of the year so far. Probably not many of my fellow booktubers read such kind of books. But this is an extraordinarily comeback of an author who had disappeared almost 10 years ago, who seemed to have finished his life as a novelist. Calling the shards, calling the guest by Emma Klein feverish would demand to call the shards by Brad Easton Ellis a novel with a body heat, a body temperature of 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius. You should call the doctor. The main character and 
The narrator of the book is a 17-year-old boy by the name of Brett Ellis in the early 1980s. And Ellis goes to the Buckley School in Sherman Oaks, California. And from the very beginning, Brett, who tells this story many decades later, as the author Brett, Brett Easton Ellis does, fills it with a lot of suspense and dark clouds approaching over the lives of these teenagers. Because in the summer of 1981, a new student named Robert Mallory comes to the school. And at the same time, almost at the same time, a serial killer who was named The Trawler by the media starts killing young women in Sherman Oaks and other districts of Los Angeles. The high school kids are driving around Sherman Oaks, Van Nuys and Panorama City in their Mercedes cars and their BMWs and Ferraris. Their parents are very often away while their relationships are torn apart and twisted and the sheer existence of Brett is shattered by so many things. Also his sexuality is homosexuality that he discovers extremely well plotted with unlikable but flesh and blood characters a huge huge portion of suspense that won't let you off the hook before page 608 and a soundtrack that is so unbelievably good the shards was my best reading experience of 2023 what were your favorite reads? If you haven't done a video about it yet, please let me know in the comments down below what was your favorite read in 2023 and slap me a like, please, and subscribe to the channel to get more of this. And soon I will talk about my favorite nonfiction reads that I had last year in 2023 that you just have to read. For this time, I say thank you and goodbye.